destroyed. Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. I'm your host, Definition, and this episode we're going to be breaking down the new Netflix film, The Platform. The high-concept movie has a lot to unpack from it, and in the wake of what's currently going on in the world, the film feels extremely relevant. Throughout this video, we're going to be discussing the ins and outs of the movie's plot, its ending, and the real meaning behind it. There will be heavy spoilers here, so if you haven't had a chance to catch the movie yet and don't want anything ruined, then I highly recommend that you turn off now. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for videos like this every day, and please click the thumbs up if you enjoy it. With all that out of the way, thank you for clicking this. Now let's get into our breakdown of the platform. Okay, so the platform has several metaphors about society, with there being clear comments about class warfare. The platform is set in a dystopian future in which resources are short and clearly the structures of civilization are failing. We follow Goreng, a member of a prison called The Pit that is made up of 333 levels. Goreng has voluntarily entered the prison in order to get a degree, but he soon realizes that he's signed up for more than he bargained for. On each level other than zero, there are two prisoners placed in a cell and a platform of food that descends from the top downwards. Level zero is the location of the privileged and they create the food and thus the economy of the pit. The platform remains on each level for two minutes and in that time the prisoners can eat food from the table. If the levels above you eat too much then you will likely starve and the movie very much centers around the aesthetic that those higher up on the chain get to live lavishly whilst those further down must feed upon the scraps. The film very much carries the message that if everyone only took what they needed then there would be enough for all. However, as I'm sure you can guess, the majority of the people on the levels are very self-centered and thus they tend to overindulge whenever they get the opportunity. It's a motif that is extremely relevant to our times and this movie definitely struck a chord with me after seeing the, the crazy panic buying of toilet paper recently. That was a situation in which many people took more than they needed and thus because of this greed we've been left with shortages so the more vulnerable members of society are left with very little. This film is very much about how greed and being self-centered can often lead to the downfall of others even if unintentional. Take for example Evangeline Lilly who has recently refused to self-isolate because she says she values the freedom of life. That's fine and I'm sure we would all to, to love to go running through the hills but the reason that people are locking themselves away right now isn't because they're worried about dying from the disease. It's because if they get it they could pass it on to others who will die from it and this selfish attitude is putting people at risk. This self-centered thought process is what has led to a pandemic and now because of it everyone is worse off. I don't want to get too preachy as everyone has the right to do what they want but the movie is definitely about the thoughtful versus the thoughtless and how even just a handful of the latter can have a knock-on effect. Most of the prisoners in this movie start off very wide-eyed, however due to the situations that they're put in and the greed of others they end up becoming greedy themselves. The prisoners change levels and do so every month and we initially start with Goreng being partnered with a man named Trimagasi. All prisoners are allowed to bring one item in with them from the outside and Trimagasi has brought in a self-sharpening knife which he was pretty much tricked into buying. This exemplifies his personality and how he will always try and keep ahead of others even if it means he loses out eventually. He's a cruel man who spits on food just to lord it over those below him and is very much someone that will climb up the rope and then pull it up with them. This is because he views society as tricking him into hedging his bets on one thing and then making him realize that it was all a scam. He killed an illegal immigrant by throwing a TV out of a window in anger after he was fooled and he refuses to take responsibility for the things that he's done. He only gives Goreng what he gets in return information wise, tries to take ownership of the word obviously and won't even let Goreng come to his side of the room. It's very petty stuff and it does showcase how certain members of society act. The food in the pit could be rationed out fairly but Trimagasi would rather have the opportunity to potentially get more one day even though we know that this is a trick to keep those who are truly in power constantly above him. There are comments on communism and the movie definitely paints out the message that if things were more equal then we would live in a fairer society. However, Trimagasi doesn't wish for this as he does not view those around him as equal because he wants the opportunity to get more. This never really works out for him though and there are times where he has to resort to things like cannibalism in order to potentially get to a higher level when, if things were fairer, he would be fine every single month. He's basically that guy at work that you started off with, you know the one, 
then they became a supervisor and it completely changed the way they act. You know the guy, I think he's called Steven, but, but he's got a lisp, so he's called Steven. Now because of the outbreak that we're in, my friend was actually given a month at home to do work. However, for some reason, the people that had to remain on site said that it wasn't fair that his department were going to be off, so now he has to go back to work even though the people who made an uproar will have to be in any way. They made things worse for others even though they didn't have to because they viewed things as being unfair. It speaks to human behaviour and how we will often try to bring down others with us. Similar to this, Trimagasi has very little power, so the power that he does get has completely corrupted him and he uses it to crap on others. Those above him will never accept him, but he's driven so much by his own ego that he sees himself as powerful and thus he becomes a figure of hate. Juxtaposing this, Goreng rises throughout the film, and this is exemplified in his choice of his item, which is the book Don Quixote. In that, a nobleman goes through so much due to the splendour that he receives that he loses his mind and ends up becoming a knight that serves the community instead of himself. That's a real top level view of it, but the book is very much exemplified in Goreng's journey. He's criticised for doing this and represents the academic not having first hand experience of what they're talking about, but it does eventually provide him with the knowledge of how to help others. Goreng initially starts off refusing to eat the food, but of course hunger gets the better of him and he ends up giving in to the system, much in the same way that my wife ended up buying 900 toilet rolls because everyone else did. One day, another prisoner named Miharu comes down on the platform searching for a child. It's believed that this is her son, but as we get into the movie, we discover that this is untrue. She's an immigrant and because of this she falls into the other. Trimagasi villainizes her with lies and you get the sense that he blames her for the way things are rather than realizing that it's the system at fault and not her. Society dumps on her and even when she stands up for herself, she's further detested. In this first month, Goreng makes the most of what he has with Trimagasi and his lip service pay to the latter believing in God this month because he's had a good one. This kind of reminded me of when actors and sports stars gain awards and they thank God for it. When they lose, they don't blame God for making them lose, so yeah, it was a nice little line that shows human psychology. Anyway, they both wake up on level 171, which is the lowest one that Trimagasi has ever been on, and because of this, he pulls the drastic measure of tying Goreng up in order to eat him. When the platform comes down with no food, he blames those above and calls them animals for not leaving anything, however, he did the same. He purges Goreng's flesh in order to make him taste better, and just as he's about to start the long and agonising process of eating him, Miharu comes down and rescues him. Goreng resorts to eating Trimagasi, and he learns perspective on what it is to be as desperate as the man before him, showing that being less judgmental to others is very important as you don't know what they've been through. He wakes up in a cell on level 33 with Imugari, who was an interviewer for The Pit. She's been diagnosed with terminal cancer and is racked with guilt for being part of the system. After sending so many to hell, she's decided to join them to try and help. She represents the higher up feeling remorseful for their privilege and actually sacrifices herself in order to help Goreng. Initially, she talks to the prisoners below about rationing, but they don't listen. This showcases those in positions of power, using their voices to try and influence those below. Gal Gadot recently did a video in which celebrities sang Imagine by John Lennon, and it was meant to show that we're all in this together. However, as you probably know, this didn't go down well. Celebrities, due to their privilege, aren't in the desperate situations that others are in, and thus, sending thoughts and prayers does very little. Similar to that video, the words of Imugari fall on deaf ears, and Goreng is forced into making threats that change things. He threatens to defecate on the food if they don't listen, and thus the ones below do, but the ones above don't because they have no threat to them. Thus, we can take from this that the power structure of kindness must start from the top. All this adds to a really engaging film, and it's certainly one of the most unique metaphors of society's structure and how things are set up. Miharu arrives on the platform, and they save her, but she kills Imugari's dog, and thus she's sent back down. Imugari says that the woman is an actress, and her prejudices get the better of her. She says that she interviewed her, and as she didn't have a child with her at the time, Imugari brandishes her a liar. Upon waking up on level 202, we realise that Imugari has killed herself in order to give something for Goreng to feed upon. There are last supper metaphors, as well as her and Trimagasi's ghosts, acting as angels and devils on his shoulder. After surviving an arduous month, he wakes up in a cell with a man named Baharat who brought a robin with him in order to climb up, but those above don't let him ascend. This could have destroyed the pair, 
However, the two decide to ride the lift down, rationing out the food to the cells. They've put their differences in race, attitude, and background aside, and thus there's a positive outcome. This shows that when we work together, instead of divided, we can survive and get by. Though this rationing is initially hated by the masses, after proving it works and convincing those through the process, they send a message to level zero. They initially think that the best way to do this is through protecting a perfect dessert and sending it back up, which shows that when we bond, we can showcase that things can change. Through the descent, they see people coveting money, their possessions, and anything they can, even though it's completely pointless to the predicament that they're in. Upon arriving at the bottom, they discover Miharu's child, who is actually shown to be a girl, showcasing how things get twisted and change when we do not know the full story. They give the dessert to her to eat, cementing that she carries the message with her. After Baharat dies, Goreng puts the child on the platform and it travels back up to the top. This cements that it is possible to teach the children of our future that there are other ways to do things and that they must not become trapped into the same routines as us. Those higher up believe that no one below 16 was in the pit and they enforce these lies, perhaps to free themselves of guilt. However, this showcases that there were indeed younger people suffering and they would likely go on to grow up and become trapped in the same systems. If we are able to teach those going forward not to fall victim to the same mistakes as we did, then there will be progression that will eventually elevate us all. It shows us that we can use our actions and words to let the higher ups know that things must change, however, we too must be willing to make sacrifices in order to achieve this. At the bottom, Goreng goes off with the ghost of Trimagasi, showing that the old ways have died and it is possible that there can be a new way of thinking. Now before we get into the review, I just want to let you know we're giving away a free copy of the Star Wars Skywalker Saga box set to one random subscriber. All you have to do to be in with a chance of winning is like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave your thoughts on the film in the comment section below. The winner is going to be chosen at random on the 15th of April and the set will be shipped out from then to whoever gets the prize, so best of luck to everyone who takes part. Now what did I think of the movie overall? Well, whilst I definitely don't think that the platform is for everyone, those who appreciate films that have a lot of social commentary in will definitely lap this up. There's a lot going on and it carries a powerful message with it. The movie is well acted and presented and it stands as probably the best Netflix original this year. Due to the times that we currently live in, I feel like the platform is extremely relevant and should definitely be something that people check out even if they don't agree with all of the key themes. The platform is great and I think it will be a big talking point going forward. It's a movie that stuck with me long after watching it and because of that it gets a 9 out of 10. Now obviously I'd love to hear your thoughts on the platform and what you took from the movie. Comment below and let me know and if you enjoyed this video then please give it a thumbs up and make sure you check out our breakdown of Westworld Season 3 Episode 1 which is going to be linked at the end. If you want to support the channel from as little as 99 cents a month then please click the join button below. We massively appreciate it and as a thank you you get access to content early. If you want to come chat to us after the show either follow us at DefinitionYT or click the discord link in the description below. Those are the best ways to keep up to date with heavy spoilers so hopefully we see you over there very soon. This is a channel for people who are mad into movies, so if that's the kind of thing you like, hit subscribe. Huge thank you for taking the time to watch this. I've been Definition, you've been the best, and I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.